Yeah, uh, does Bobby, Bobby ride down? Hey, Amen. This is Bobby. Hi, Bobby. And then we're going to go to uh, Rob and Gail Seidel and uh, John Butcher and the Squires. Go Hola, ahead. buenas noches y muchas gracias por la invitación. Muchas gracias a las personas de Jote, a las personas de NRC y también a las personas eh, que residen aquí en, en el área de Nuevo México y a los visitantes de Texas. Muchas gracias. Uh, I can do this in both English and Spanish, but I don't know how many people speak Spanish here in this room, but I'm here representing Hispanic women in science. My name is not Bobby, my name is Gemma Strong, but I'm, uh, she, she gave her place to speak to you tonight. So I just want to say that I'm a woman, I'm Hispanic, and I'm coming from a very conservative Catholic family. And uh, you know, in the, I grew in a place where I was raised to be intuitive and to always you know, make questions about how to make this world a better place. So, and one of the other things that is also very important to mention is that I'm coming from this new generation. So, and I'm here to give voice to this new generation. And the reason why I'm here is because I decided to choose a career that is gonna change people's lives in a positive way and that is nuclear engineering because I do believe that nuclear engineer, uh, engineers will be able to provide a better future for everybody. So uh, I think that this, uh, you know, consolidated internal storage is gonna work. So I know that many people don't agree to that, but I mean, we need to be, we need to use facts. And I don't know if you guys have already checked, you know, the, the reports, the environmental reports. So all the information is there. Another thing that I would like to mention is that thousands of people in this world, they, they benefit from nuclear industry. Thousands of people. So that's also something that we need to be aware of. Uh, so one of the things that I've been seeing while being in this industry is that I can smell the fear of the oil industry. I can smell it in this room, unfortunately. So we, uh, so we know, actually, we already transferred spent fuel, and we haven't had a single accident. So I'm here as a woman, as a Hispanic, as a millennial, to bring innovative ideas in the nuclear industry realm, and also I have a moral obligation to defend our future. And I believe that ignorance is a very dangerous weapon, so I'm here to defend this future with knowledge and facts. So all the technical details about security and environmental aspect, they have been realized, they have been checked already. But we're still dealing with ignorance. And that's why I'm here, because I believe that the nuclear industry is gonna re regenerate the world in a positive way. And I know even do you guys want it or not, we are benefit we are getting benefits from nuclear industry already. So that's all that I'm gonna say tonight because we already have all the records and everything out there. And I will invite you everybody to read and to learn a little bit more. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias. Thank you. This is uh Ronda. Okay. And if you could just introduce yourself to us. Hi, my name is Ramda. I'm a student <clears throat> at the University of New Mexico and I'm studying nuclear engineering. Um, I would like to start by saying that radiation is natural. We are all radioactive, we produce radioactivity naturally. <clears throat> but I understand the concern of high level radioactive material and that's okay. Um, but the only way to overcome that fear is through true understanding and knowledge without bias. Um, one of the main concerns is the transportation of the spent fuel. Transportation of spent fuel or radioactive material is not new and it has already been done. Um, WIP has driven trucks for 18 years with not a single transfer accident. Uh, Urenco stores and ships tons of radioactive material by rail and truck without any incident. Um, and I can be more than certain that this project wouldn't take off without first thoroughly testing and assuring safe tra transportation. In one of the posters outside today, um, we can see the different environmental and hypothetical accidents the canisters can endure. And 
some of these are heat, cold, pressure fluctuation, vibration, water spray, free drop, compression, penetration, um, 30 feet uh, free fall, um, crash immersion, puncture, and 800,000 um, sorry, um, 800 degrees Celsius fires. Um, and so I would highly doubt that, you know, they would put people in danger in, without testing these things. I would also like to mention that Holtec has already been transporting and um, spent nuclear fuel for decades here in the U.S. and around the world. So it is not new and it is not more, it's not a mere luck that this has been done with excellence. It is not luck. We have tested and taken and are still taking te um, the necessary precautions to get these materials to their destination safe. So there's the question of the rails and how they are going to withstand the weight. And yes, these things will get tested and if they need repair, they will be repaired. And I understand our industry, the nuclear industry, is so fragile because our, we are constantly being watched by people. So we won't make mistakes. So I believe that the NRC along with Holtec will do everything in their power to make this project safe for our environment, our community, and our next generation. Thank you for listening. Hey, thank you very much, Rhonda. Uh, we have, this is James? Okay, and Gemma? Okay, James, James Pike. Hello everyone, my name is James Pike. I'm also a student at the University of New Mexico studying nuclear engineering. I'm a graduate student looking into material science, so a lot of applications to radiation and how to store stuff too. Um, I just want to point out, I grew up in Los Angeles, New Mexico. I know what a small town culture feels like. I understand you guys' safeties and concerns. But I want to let you guys know that what the NRC is doing is they are trying to keep you guys safe. They are the guidelines for the world for any type of radioactive material handling or any type of nuclear power plants. I just went to a talk recently and they talked about how countries around the world look to the NRC for safety and for help and for everything. They model what they look at after the NRC. And I know the NRC takes pride in that. So I don't think they will lie to you guys because they are setting a world example for you guys. Um, one thing I'd also like to mention, and my colleague touched on it, radiation is everywhere. We had a banana this morning that had radiation in it. Um, also, one thing you guys might not know is radioactivity is used in the oil business. And you guys are not protesting that. They use radioactive tracers to put into the ground and they track oil. They use radioactivity to find the formation of where oil is. So radioactivity, it's, it is kind of scary, but we have a knowledge of it. We know how to keep it safe and keep it away from, more, from dairy farms and from places like that. And as future nuclear engineers, we want to ensure that safety. That's why we're down here too. We want to, we're listening to you guys' concerns and in the future, we want to make sure your guys' concerns are in our design. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you, James. Thank you, James. And is it, is it Gemma? Um, I let Gemma Strong take my place because I wanted a woman of color to speak before I did. So, so in other I words, when I called Bobby Rydell, yeah. right, you guys are changing identities. But do you want to talk? Yes, I do. Well, go ahead. Hello, my name is Bobby Rydell. I'm sorry for any confusion. Um, today, uh, I want to say I'm a nuclear engineer. Um, I'm a graduate student, a PhD candidate at the University of New Mexico. And I want to say I ardently believe in this project. Nuclear spent fuel casks are designed in such a way that they are, are designed to be with the fuel, the dry fuel, is in a leak proof container that is sealed and that is within a larger container that is filled with an inert gas that allows for cooling of that spent fuel there there i've heard a lot of really important concerns tonight about radiation leakage about the fuel leaking out of these containers and if you look at the actual designs of these spent fuel casts you'll see that this isn't a problem 
We are here today as experts in this field to talk to you about your concerns, um, to speak with you, and I'm so glad that I spoke to so many of you today. I would also like to say that the fear that people have around radiation, uh, it is a concern. But if you actually look at the design of this place, if you are at the edge of this facility, let's say you're at the fence of this proposed Holtec facility, you will receive 25 millirems uh, per year. If you stood at the edge of this Holtec facility for an entire year, now what is 25 millirems? Well, if you took a plane flight from New York to LA, it's about that much. So if you stood there an entire year, day and night, that's what you would get. How many of you like to take vacations? I would assume that many of you like to take vacations. Many of you have flown in planes. Many of you have gone to the dentist. Many of you, I, I see we have a, an older population. Maybe many of you have suffered from cancer. Did you know that uh, all of the diagnostics for uh, cancer treatment, that's, radi that's radioactive material. Um, the nuclear industry, if you actually look at CANDU reactors um, up in Canada, they produce all of the medical isotopes for the U.S. Things that you use every day, things that, are, that, that help you survive are, are, are radioactive. Um, and so what I'm here saying is, is that you need, don't need to fear this. You don't need to fear like, oh my gosh, there's going to be some radiation that leaks. What, what are, like, okay, um, if you ate a banana this morning, you, you also got potassium-44 in your system as well. That's a radioactive isotope. Um, I'm also here, I heard that you, people have said, uh, nuclear power hasn't done anything for me. The Palo Verde reactor in Arizona supports 35% of the carbon neutral energy for New Mexico. 20% of all power in the US is from nuclear power plants. And all of that, zero carbon emissions. If we get rid of our power plants, if we decide, eh, we don't want to find a place to store this nuclear waste, it would be like getting rid of every single windmill in the US you would be destroying the environment. I'm here because I believe in supporting the environment and mitigating climate change. I'm here because I believe that this is a safe facility and I believe that we as a community with knowledge and understanding and talking to these people and reading the reports and learning about, okay, what is a LARA? What is, um, what is a millirem? How many of you know what a millirem is? Learning those things are so important. Thank you. I want today answer your questions. We'll be here. You have questions for me. You have concerns. You're skeptic. Please ask me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. And Dieter? Yes. This is, this is Dieter, and then we're going to go to uh, Karen Bonim, Ira Strong, Charlene Hernandez, and Jimmy Gadzia. Dieter. Uh, hello, I'm Dieter Hanbicki. I'm a current junior at the University of New Mexico where I study nuclear engineering. Uh, before I get into my speech that I've prepared, uh, one of my classmates wanted to show this. Uh, it is a letter of recommendation that we go along with the whole tech plan. We have 31 signatures on this petition along with it, including the, uh, one of the uh, distinguished faculty members at UNM, Dr. Robert Bush, and the incoming uh, American Nuclear Society president. Uh, uh, so three years ago, I decided to move from my sleepy little town in southeastern Pennsylvania to New Mexico for my degree. I had never visited the state before, and my first thought when getting off this plane was, wow, it's hot. Uh, later I would go to see the state and see everywhere and see how beautiful it is. I started my New Mexico journey because I saw online that the Bureau of Labor Statistics website say that nuclear engineers make 
uh, starting salary of $80,000 a year, and I came to UNM because they accepted me. Holtec states that they will have about 100 operators, 100 construction jobs, and perhaps 50 manufacturing jobs if they get to stage three, just in this area. That may not seem like a lot, but that would be 250 well-paying, secure jobs for a minimum of up to 40 years. The little town in Pennsylvania that I hail from has a population of only 30 or only 3,000 people with a median income of $56,000 per household. So while it doesn't seem like a lot, to me, that seems like a lot of jobs and a lot of money. In addition, my little town of New Britain, Pennsylvania recently vetoed, uh, we had a town hall meeting like this where a uh, gas uh, plant wanted to be built in the town and we vetoed it. So I know as long as long as I sympathize with you guys of not knowing uh, something that we don't want in our town because we think it might be dangerous. Additionally, I agree with all of you. We should have a permanent waste solution uh, site here in the United States. However, we don't. So this is the next best thing that we can have. New Mexico uh, was here in the beginning of the nuclear industry, and it should continue to be there in the future of the industry. Even if, even if it's for selfish reasons, I want, it to, I want the whole tech plant to be here so that I may be able to live here for uh, the foreseeable future. Thank you.